Pygmalion worked day and night carving the statue of a woman of unparalleled beauty. She looked so gentle and divine that he could not take his eyes off the statue. Enchanted with his own creation, he felt waves of joy and desire sweeping over his body, and in a moment of inspiration he named the figurine Galatea, meaning she who is white like milk. He covered her with the finest linens, decorated her with the most exquisite jewelry, placed the most exquisite flowers in her hair, gave her the most exquisite presents, and gave her a passionate kiss. Pygmalion was utterly enamored and possessed by his creation. He wanted the lifeless woman to be his wife because the spell she cast on him was too strong to resist. Welcome to the history realm. Today we go into a love story of a famous sculptor that falls in love with his own creation and wishes to give this creation life. If you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe to support the channel. Anyways, countless nights and days the man spent staring upon his creation. But Pygmalion hated and avoided women for reasons that are only known to him, and he found comfort in his skill alone. He was so condemning of women, in fact, he had sworn to never get married. He only knew beauty in his sculptures, giving each piece of ivory a lifelike aspect. Pygmalion had an unwavering commitment to his craft which left him with little time to appreciate women's attractiveness. In modern times, this man would be labeled an incel. Meanwhile, plans were in full swing for the goddess Aphrodite's feast, which was quickly approaching. During the festival day, Pygmalion prayed to the goddess Aphrodite with all of his heart, pleading with her to transform his ivory figure into a real woman. Aphrodite, moved by his intense passion, went alone to Pygmalion's workshop to view this well-known statue. She was astounded by the statue's vibrancy and beauty as soon as she laid eyes on it. After giving it a closer look, Aphrodite saw that Galatea resembled her in terms of perfection and beauty. Satisfied, she gave Pygmalion his wish, and she also pressed the like button in support to this channel. Anyways, with great hope, the master sculptor hurried straight to Galatea after arriving home. He initially saw that the ivory figurine's cheeks were flushed, but gradually it became clear to him that Aphrodite had heard his cries. He was unable to control himself, so he tightly hugged Galatea in his arms. Pygmalion watched in awe as his cherished figurine came to life, smiling at him and expressing gratitude for her creator. The once cold ivory became soft and warm. Their love blossomed over the days and before long, wedding vows were exchanged between the two lovers with Aphrodite blessing them with happiness and prosperity. The happy couple had a son, Paphos, who later founded the city of Paphos in Cyprus. Some say that Pygmalion and Galatea also had a daughter, Metharme. The end of the line is that the couple lived happily ever after. The enchanting tale of Pygmalion and Galatea has captured hearts for centuries. Imagine a sculptor, Pygmalion, so talented that he crafts an ivory statue so beautiful he falls deeply in love with it. This isn't just any love story. It's about the magic that happens when passion meets art. The myth of Pygmalion and Galatea perfectly encapsulates one of ancient art's primary objectives, the mimesis of nature. In Greek and Roman art, an artist sought to copy nature as closely as possible. In this case, it became reality. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this short story, please leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Until next time on the History Realm.